All right. Hi, Greg. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hi. Well, thank you for joining us. And I will give a little brief overview about you, introduce you to everyone. So this is Greg Olenek. He is our resident plant maintenance expert and instructor extraordinaire at micromanagement. So Greg will tell you a bit about his background. We'll go through and answer questions at the end. And we are very pro questions. So please throughout it, as Greg talks about his background, uh, about different key points about plant maintenance, you can go ahead and actually input your questions. So type those in. You don't have to wait till the very end. I will be monitoring that for Greg, keeping track of him. So this is meant to be very interactive and we are very happy to have you here, Greg. So thank you very much for spending your time with us. Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, so my, my name is uh, Greg Olnick and I've been uh, working with computers since I was a kid programming games and stuff. And, and uh, that was way back in time at Sinclair. Then uh, working in university programming databases for uh, genetics and I got into teaching all the all the researchers software and I really enjoyed that. So I, that's where I started working at different training centers in Montreal and Vancouver. And then and got involved with SAP after working at the college but by running um, a training center for five years for Catalyst Paper. And then uh, so I ended up working for Catalyst Paper for about 15 years. And, and uh, that was a great, great experience as I went to, as a speaker, I was uh, at a lot of the SAP conferences in like Florida, California, Texas. And I came in third place a, as a speaker of 50 speakers in California. And so they sent me to Australia. That was great. So went worked for an Australian company for a year and, and went on to uh, independent consulting all over US, Canada, even uh, of course back to Australia, Hawaii, Saudi Arabia even. So uh, yeah, SAP is uh, a constant learning curve and uh, I love it, You're always learning more. So that's uh, any questions about my, my background, feel free to type them in. I, and I'll go on to the, uh, the next slide. So I've been working at uh, micromanagement developing courses for a number of years. So probably like three, what is it, three or four years now? And uh, it's a great, they've been very supportive. They, they help me with my slides and then I do the voiceovers and then I, I do the uh, SAP walkthroughs. And uh, I'm currently working on a course for planners, which I'm gonna try to do in modules. So instead of a planner needing to take everything, they can just take the module that they want to uh, fill in the gaps like task lists or or uh, strategies or whatever. So this slide just talks about my uh, enthusiasm of teaching SAP and I do teaching, coaching, uh, data cleansing and so on. And currently I'm working at a, a mine here on Vancouver Island actually coaching their planners and helping them with, with data stuff. Like I built an SQL database offline for uh, all the guys that can search parts without SAP for, the, uh, for stock or non-stock. This was uh, quite powerful. Anyway, that's a uh, so listing of some of my courses I have and the reviews. And so I have 10 courses currently. So this is a, a quick summary of what I've been up to and working at Catalyst, like I mentioned, and the different places I've been. And so my my forte, my my favorite thing is to do uh, training, delivery, coaching, but also troubleshooting. I love helping people, making them more efficient. So the uh, first thing I like to do at a new company is do an audit of their software, their data, but then also I, I coach and job shadow the planners and see where they're being inefficient. Like at one site, the planners were taking like two hours to take a quote from a PDF and putting it into SAP to order all those parts. And uh, yeah, the quote was like three pages long, but when I was done, I showed them how to grab that data, convert it to Excel and with a template, automatically map everything to SAP parts, and then it put it into the work order. So all the columns on the work order that we needed, we got displayed. So it was a, a, a huge investment in saving them time because it, like I say, it takes time to save time. It took a two hour process down to about three minutes and the accuracy was huge. So they, they didn't have to search for part numbers to find if they already had an SAP, it was all automatic. 
So I have videos of that on my YouTube channel if you're interested. The uh, main focus I do, like I mentioned, is SAP PM, plant maintenance, but I also am an expert in DMS, document management system. And uh, I've, I've worked with project system as well and compatible units for a hydro plant. And what else have I done? I, of course, MM to a degree. I, I don't do warehouse management and public speaking. So any questions about that, feel free. So some people ask me why, why I focus on SAP PM. Well, my background, like I mentioned, working in genetics was in databases. And uh, when I, I worked for a number of years at a computer place where I was the uh, retail database guy. So setting, like finding a product for a retail store, setting them up with the inventory retail management software or micro biz or whatever fit the needs of that client. So uh, I loved that researching the best product for the client and then also uh, learning the software and then teaching the client. So we became um, resellers for lots of different software with that. And I love helping people. Like, like, like I say, what, what my philosophy of teaching is one thing is I, I'll, I'll uh, teach you not just how to do something, but I'll teach you why and also what not to do. Sometimes that's the most important thing is what not to do to avoid problems, to avoid catastrophes with data, especially. You know, if you worked in SAP, you know that a lot of companies struggle with the with, uh, planners who aren't trained properly or they, they run deadline monitoring and they wreak havoc on the company. It ends up costing them you know, hundreds of thousand dollars in waste because they didn't train their people. So uh, I like to teach by not just telling them what to do, but also I share these horror stories because people remember that. Many companies struggle and the Often people tell me that, why is SAP so unfriendly? And I said, well, it's, sometimes it's how you were taught. Like if you're not taught the easy way, then you think it's difficult. Like one guy in a plane asked me like, it's like, hey, what do you say? That's something like 12 clicks to get a darn PO out of a work order. I said, no, no, it's one click. And I actually, on the plane, I told him it's that little icon that looks like three pieces of paper. And you can click on that document flow, shows you all your requisitions, purchase orders, time confirmations. You can drill in. So the data comes to you in SAP if you know how to get it. IHO1, one of my favorite transactions, you can get almost everything from that transaction. IH01, I should say. You know, from the environment menu, you can go and grab all the notifications, work orders against any asset. So it's a very powerful transaction. So there's lots of opportunities for companies to optimize how they use. And the first thing I like to do is make it user friendly. Make SAP user friendly because the PM module is neglected in almost every implementation I've seen. They, they say, oh, the, the users will figure that out. Oh, they can learn how to set their own layouts or variants. So well, why? Why not set them up globally, make them really good? So when you get a new user, often the new users don't get trained after go live. They, uh, the new users are not set up to fail right from the get go. So take the time to to make the SAP more friendly before you push it up to users. So how can learning SAP help me? Well, one, uh, it was an SAP person at an SAP conference in Florida told me 85% of the world uses SAP, like almost every government office, military, um, oil and gas, electric, nuclear power plants. So it's a, there's a huge market out there of companies using and struggling with SAP. So the more you can learn about SAP to help those companies, the more contracts, consulting, and, and, uh, and anyways, it's, it's a very big market. And, and you notice that one of the things I mentioned at Catalyst Paper when they were shutting down the site, I had all these technicians taking my planner course, I thought this is weird, is they were telling me every job ad they saw required SAP. And um, the, and they were trying to get plan planner jobs, so they wanted to take my my full deal planner course. And a lot of them ended up with really good jobs up in the oil oil fields in Fort McMurray. And some some feedback I got that from the uh, owners of the companies up there is that they had some of the best trained people that came from Catalyst Paper. 
but it is it's also essential to practice and play with the software. So uh, with micromanagement, not only can you take the courses, but you have access to, you can have access to SAP. So you can go in and practice and play and try different things. And if you're working for a company that has SAP, you should get access to their training client if they don't have one. See so if you can get access to their QA quality assurance client so that you can go and practice and play. I think every planner should have access to that so that they can try a scenario before they put it into production. And because trying to learn or do things with the fear of wrecking things in production is, is going to stop people from learning. When, when you get production or make sure, uh, uh, quality, make sure you change the color to green so you don't mix it up with the production client. I share a few horror stories about that where people got mixed up and ordered stuff in the training client or quality and they wonder why three weeks later they haven't received anything. Or the opposite, they do something in production where they thought they were in training. So we have to be careful of giving that to users. So the benefits of being an SAP consultant, well, like I say, it's exciting. Everything's changing constantly. Like SAP S4 HANA is coming out with Fiori. So there's lots of learning there. But your skills, if you already know SAP, your skills aren't wasted because a lot of the screens in SAP haven't changed a lot. So um, the, the skills aren't gone, it's just enhanced. Just like how Microsoft Office, when they changed to the ribbons, you know, people who knew Word really well or Excel, they were frustrated at first, but when they got to know it, oh, this isn't so bad, a lot of your skills carry over. I get to travel a lot with consulting. And, and what I always do is I always bring my GoPro. And so if like the contract in Hawaii, I said, okay, I'll take the contract, but I want to uh, be able to, on every shift out there, it's like a two week on site. I wanted to have four or five days or in Hawaii, I did 10, uh, 10 days. So uh, staying there as a kind of like a built-in vacation. Same thing in Australia, I would have uh, two days or I think it was three between my two weeks on site in Cobar. But they, I also asked for three days in Sydney. So I paid for my accommodations and that. So I got a little vacation out of it. So I got to know Australia quite well. Great pay. The, uh, when I was working on the island here, the pay was quite good, but when I started working for Australian company, my pay doubled. So that, that's kind of how SAP consulting can, can help. But my old empl uh, boss told me that when you're consulting, you almost have to have double the pay because you, you don't have any pension, you don't have any, uh, uh, you know, you have, you don't have any, the health benefits and all that kind of stuff. So it is a big, you know, you have the extra cost, but, but um, it, uh, it's a wonderful, potential, uh, wonderful uh, opportunities there. And I like to cover all my expenses. So I worked four years in Nevada. Uh, I had a three day weekend every shift and they paid all my expenses, hotel, car, food, everything. So I have a three day tour of the country. I've, I've been, in, I know more about Nevada than most people living there. And I was traveling all over the different states around Nevada. So if you wanna know where some of the best hot springs are, I'm your guy. And I have a, a personal YouTube channel the, uh, where I post a lot of video of me doing these kind of tours. Someone asked if I see the PM module changing a lot with S4. Not a lot. There, there's some, if you're, it depends. Like if you're using the web-based version of, of uh, S4 HANA, then, then it's more like, um, it's more like business, business, uh, if they made it look more and feel like a lot, the, uh, business, warehouse or whatever, they, where the, uh, the, like the execute icon is not there anymore. The clock that we know and use a lot. I always teach use F8 function key because it's way easier when you're searching, you just hit a key F8, but uh, that got, button's gone. It's now a button on the bottom right hand corner, completely opposite of that it says the word execute. So that was initially frustrating for me, but I use F8 key. So when I searched, it didn't slow me down. A lot of things are enhanced. A lot of things are better in S4 HANA. Like you, a lot of things are a little easier. So I have a course on uh, on micromanagement about some of the changes and I, I show both. What it looks like in the web version on the cloud kind of thing and what it looks like in in SAP. And, and of course within SAP, you can change 
your GUI view so you go back to more like what you're used to. But you might have to get used to some of the new icons and stuff. If all the training manuals are going to be with the new icons, that's what you should set your, your GUI to look like. So your journey on SAP, learn, apply, and grow. And if, if you're working for a company and they're paying for you to learn, what a great opportunity. Try to, and and uh, Michael Management has a letter you can send your boss to get approval for spending money. And so take advantage as much as you can to learn while you're employed because you're building up your resume and you're building up your skills, a great place to practice. If you're currently not working, then Michael Management has the opportunity, gives you the opportunity to have an SAP client to play in. And so that's what this slide talks a bit about. And we had uh, something go out recently about how one of our best students has taken something like 6,000 courses or something. I forget what the 6,000 hours or 6,000 points. Anyway, he's taken almost every course on the, on the port, portal and he paid for an annual membership, of course. And, and uh, so that now he's probably, probably knows more about SAP than a lot of people. Like I like to specialize, so I'm an expert in certain modules and I know a few consultants who are generalists. They know a little but a lot of modules. So it's really uh, depends on what your what you, what you find like is your passion is your passion materials and of course the material management module but you should also learn PM so you know how they're integrated. And one thing I should mention that a lot of uh, times when I'm teaching a, a company, their planners need help with Excel because a lot of people export data from SAP and play with it in Excel. And I say play because really they should figure out how to do stuff in SAP, but sometimes what they want to do, SAP can't do. And they're not given the tools like the SQBI, which is a, you can write queries in the SAP. It can be dangerous, so they limit who all, who's allowed to use that. So what we do, we export all the columns of data from SAP into Excel and we consider that our raw data file. And then in another Excel file, I link to that. So not only makes it super fast, the filters are super fast, but you can't wreck the data and to update it's easy. So all your pivot tables on your charts and all that stuff in your Excel is easily updated. Say once a week, you do another data dump, it, your, your uh, main file is linked to that raw file. And I have a video on how to do that if you're not familiar with that in Excel. Of course, we also use, I also use Access and Access because a lot of companies have it and it's way more powerful, way more uh, friendly, I think, once you know it. And also it is way safer for data. And of course, SQL, online SQL is a really good thing to learn. And uh, uh, there's a, a site on, online called Caspio. Uh, they're out of actually Ukraine. They give you free access. To uh, for 14 days completely for programming. So if you want to learn XQL, that's a good place to start. Of course, Michael Management. I don't know if they have a course on SQL. If they don't, they, maybe that's I I can put one up there. Um, questions people have asked in the past. Uh, so while I'm going through these, if you're thinking of any questions that you have, feel free to type them in the the question box. <clears throat> Why is SAP so difficult? There's that, that story I told you about the guy in the airplane, 12 clicks to get a PO. It's, that's ridiculous. Of course, if you really know SAP, you know that you, sometimes you need that. If you have a work order that has like 50 components on it and you want to see just the PO of one row, oh, you need to know how to drill into that one row. But um, I teach drilling in by double click on the uh, row number. So. Most people think you have to use the buttons and yeah, there's lots of easy ways to do things. So what does SAP stand for? Uh, like if you want to type in the question, if you know the answer to that, but <laughs> when one of my conferences I was speaking at, I, I asked the audience, they were all SAP trainers. So I, I was uh, tra training trainers about how I train or teach SAP. 
And uh, first question I asked the audience, what does SAP stand for? And everyone was saying negative stuff. They were saying, and I expected that. They were saying stupid ass program, send another planner, uh, system ain't paying, uh, all sorts of negative stuff. They, some companies even make mugs with all the negative stuff on it. So my first slide comes up, it's Superman with the SAP logo. And I say, it's super amazing program. I say, if you don't have a positive attitude, you can't teach SAP and you can't learn SAP as a student. You have to have a positive attitude. And the more you learn about SAP, the more positive attitude you'll probably have about it. So I also tell people now though, SAP stands for super or uh, super amazing pizza. I say, why pizza makes me hungry? Um, it's because you can have it with a lot of anchovies, like you can have it any way you want. Like a lot of companies, when they buy SAP, the managers think, oh, I love anchovies. I'm gonna put a lot of anchovies. And everyone hates that, right? The planners, the, the technicians, they can't use it. It fails. The implementation fails. No user adoption, it's a disaster. So they end up taking off those anchovies, which costs a lot of money to put them on. It takes them. And basically the customization of SAP is very powerful, but you want to have, make sure that it's not too many anchovies. So that's an, an analogy I give to explain how it's very customizable. Now, of course, you know what it stands for, right? Systems, applications, and products and data processing, kind of like a meaningless acronym, like many acronyms. When you teach SAP, if you were a teacher, make sure you explain the acronym so you don't lose people by saying, oh, just go and hire a VA. What's a VA? Veterans Affair? You know, you need to explain what that means. You know, it's a virtual assistant and explain what it is. I, one of the things, even I've been teaching computers since I was uh, young, I, I, I try to always explain the acronyms. The slides should explain them as well. Like PO, purchase order. So sometimes I, I ask my students to catch me if I don't explain an acronym. So they're, they're my best uh, police. What, how do companies manage obsolete parts? Poorly. Almost every company, they, they don't manage it very well. Supply chain and maintenance don't talk to each other very well, typically. So, so supply chain will obsolete parts without communication with maintenance. So now all their bombs have obsolete parts and they go to order stuff, they buy stuff. It says parts obsolete, blah, blah, blah. So the supply chain and maintenance need to be best friends. So maintenance is the customer of supply chain. So they should want to make maintenance happy. So there are some transactions in SAP to do mass change. If your bombs are set up properly in Tesla's, then CS20 allows the mass change to flow all the way through. So when you change a material for a good reason, and if you change it because you got a better price, make sure you talk to your planners that, that it'll still perform the job. Of course, you do mass change with LSMW and or other tools like in S S uh, S4 HANA. What are the skills that are helpful along with SAP? Like I mentioned, Excel, Access, SQL. What else? Um, Outlook. If you know how to use Outlook calendars or Google calendars, you can actually integrate data with Google calendars from SAP. So I built something for um, automation, the shift calendars in uh, Excel to automate it for till the year 9999. And, and that was helping them. And then I found out, uh, I found a template, it's awesome, that has all the shifts available in SAP integrated in this Excel tool. Any other skills I can think of? Uh, no, that's, a, that's the main ones. If you can think of anything that, that you find useful with SAP, you can type in the question there as well and share with the group. So I don't know if I went too fast through that presentation, but uh, I know your time is valuable and it's now 1025. So that was about a half an hour. So we can have some time for questions and I can share my SAP screen if you have a question while I'm in SAP. Learning ABAP is good. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know what I heard what someone mentioned that comment, ABAP, very true. One thing I heard, I don't know if it's true, is that the best, the highest paid programmers on the planet 
are app appers, people who know how to program code in SAP. And the code used to be, when I first started SAP back in the, the late 90s or uh, early 2000, uh, programmers told me that it was all in German. A lot of the code was in German because the software originated in California through IBM, but they, they, the programmers were mostly, uh, they relocated to Germany. And anyway, the, so there was a lot of German words in there and code. But now I think, I think it's a lot more friendly. So yeah, learning programming is great. LSMW, if, SQBI, if you get into those, you kind of get a taste of uh, that with the BAPIs. So that gives you an introduction to that. The um, one thing that was cool at Catalyst Papers, we had our own app apper in Vancouver. So anything we wanted, he built. And it was amazing. Like we needed a better search tool. So he built us a Google search tool that was embedded in SAP for fuzzy search and search all the fields. It was amazing. Now that's available to other third party software programs, but we had that way, way early. Uh, we had uh, electronic shopping carts for parts, we had for staging and so on. Uh, whatever we needed, pretty much, he would build for us. Yeah, so having good app app is excellent. Greg, what drew you to PM over other modules? Um, because I, my background was in databases, I, and also I worked in companies that are, as a, helping people with with parts and stuff like that, and the maintenance side of thing always interests me, like doing my own oil change, my own brake jobs. So the maintenance side of things really interests me. And Catalyst Paper, that's where they had a huge need to teach all the technicians. So th that's where I, gr I gravitated to helping all the technicians learn SAP, which they were teaching me as I was teaching them. I was learning about the difference between ball bearings and roller bearings and different purposes and pumps for pumping water, pumping acid, how they're different packing, all, the, all that kind of stuff. So um, maintenance has always been very interesting to me. So because of the need and because of the interest. Yeah, it's very cool. And I looks like we have another question coming in from Leslie. What kind of companies use the PM module? Oil and yeah. gas doesn't sound like manufacturing. Yeah, right. Uh, PM is actually plant maintenance. So it's anything, any company that maintains their own assets. Like uh, mining is huge with P uh, SAP uh, all over the world. And uh, they maintain their haul trucks, their, their, uh, all their pumps for the process plant, fixed plant. That they, they maintain all their equipment. So if you're talking about production, like uh, manufacturing, that would be more the PP module, production planning. And I've never gotten into that. Catalyst Paper, they didn't use SAP for their production planning. They had, they had their own software that uh, independent of SAP that integrated. So they never went down the, the PP module. So many companies use it, like uh, train companies, they, they maintain their trains and so on. Uh, utilities, yeah, definitely utilities. And utilities use what's called linear assets. It's a, uh, a module or a functionality in SAP for linear uh, things like train tracks, hydro lines, anything that you can have a problem within the line would be a linear asset. You can make a notification at the uh, three mile mark or three and a half mile mark, and 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 it's easy to find the uh, where the problem was. So yeah, utilities, nuclear power plants, like I mentioned, uh, government, the um, Shipping companies. Now, some companies will use SAP for their HR and accounting because it's enterprise, right? It does everything. It has modules for almost everything except it doesn't do AutoCAD, <laughs> but it integrates. I was at a utility company with compatible units. They integrate with the uh, CAD drawings for doing the, the, the drawings. The quotes are all integrated with SAP. Pretty amazing. With, with just drop objects onto the CAD to, to design the uh, new power plant and everything is automatically integrated for the price and how much labor for quoting and then for actually building for all the work orders. That's very impressive. And actually on the same theme of integration, uh, we have someone asking about DMS and how DMS mm -hmm. is integrated with SAP. Well, DMS, and they also have a tool called Easy DMS, which is being phased out. Let's say uh, Hannah won't support it. But uh, DMS, Document Management System, it allows you to control your documents within SAP. 
like some companies use SharePoint and you can integrate that as well to manage versioning and all the, your documents, whether it's manuals, uh, job procedures, whatever, a warranty, all the documents like uh, uh, vendor invoices, vendor uh, quotes can all be managed within BMS. And it integrates with all modules. So in, in PM where we use DMS, like we do use services for objects on a notification to attach uh, pictures. You know, they say pictures worth a thousand words, right? So you can attach a picture, but you should have a document server where those pictures are actually saved. So you don't interrupt your SAP server. That's a technical thing. But DMS we use for uh, maintenance manuals that we can actually put into the, the, uh, the structure in IHO one we can actually put it into the equipment bomb. So you'd see the parts for that truck and the maintenance manual, operating manual, all that. So those manuals are actually stored and controlled in SAP DMS. And of course the uh, job procedures, like check sheets, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, uh, permits like that can all be in SAP DMS. And then you link it to the task list operation. So what is the job? would have the job procedure attached to it. So when you print out the work order, it prints out the documents. So all your document control can be automated and managed in DMS. Okay, okay. good to know. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No worries, that's it. I think uh, that covers uh, DMS to a degree. It's, it's a uh, powerful module to learn, but it's also, um, it's underutilized. And people don't use nor know about templates. They don't use templates. You should build and use templates. I, I push templates for everything. You're building a new equipment, build it from a template, copy a template. You're building a new, uh, so everything in, in SAP, why reinvent the wheel? Almost always you should build by template, copy reference objects, you know, the idea of having uh, less work to do. That's what task lists are all about. Yeah. People think task lists are just for, uh, Maintenance plans for preventive maintenance, they're not. They're for corrective maintenance as well. If you have a breakdown on a motor, why should you have to type anything repetitive? Everything could be stored in a task list that automatically comes into your work order. Yeah, so very smart. Anyone, any other questions? At the... Yes, we have a question coming in from YouTube. So we are live streaming this. So a, hey, one of our, yeah. Uh, so one of our viewers is asking, how can a beginner start their journey in SAP and without having a technical background, is it possible to learn SAP? Hmm. Without a technical background, yes, you could learn SAP as a user, right? And um, if you have te uh, no technical background, but you have technical aspirations, then anyone can learn anything, right? You could be like 60 years old and learn how to play a piano. Um, <laughs> I think the best way to learn is if you say you like you said don't you don't have the technical background and uh, if you don't have access is you try to get a job that is using SAP an entry level job if you if that's all you can get in get get your foot in the door and then as but and they will have documentation probably online they should on their network that you can read through and if you uh, can get access to even just their training client. And, and say well, yeah, you want to you want to be able to get a promotion to the next level, and you can maybe they will give you access to their training client so you can work after hours on their SAP. Well, good luck to you. Package sequence oh, screens. Funny. How hierarchy columns on package screen interact with the sequence package? Well, that's a pretty technical question. Oh, oh, I didn't read the top part. I'm having trouble with using IP11. Okay, IP11. Now, some people say, well, what is that? Well, it's a transaction code. And uh, change maintenance strategies, specifically the maintenance package. And, pa you know, maintenance strategies should be really controlled. You shouldn't allow your planners to edit them or create them. It should be controlled centrally by one person because they are very complicated. And this is a question beyond the scope I can answer in here. But just to say, I, I feel for you because strategies, I usually build them in Excel. And so you can have the whole strategy built from, and then, then you copy and paste that into, into the grid within the strategy that you're trying to create. The maintenance package and package sequence screens, how does the hierarchy columns on the package screen interact with the sequence page? So 
in SAP with the strategies, the hierarchy is a concept where if you have, say, um, a run hour strategy, so you have like 500 run hours, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. So you have those different cycles of maintenance. When it's set hierarchical, then when you're going to actually build a maintenance plan for that, you can have it either way with, with uh, check boxes or through the uh, menu, you can have it so that uh, a thousand run hour maintenance doesn't need, it was suppressed to 500. So that, that gives you that ability with hierarchical assignment. So that is something that is better explained graphically, like with the, um, with, we often I actually explain it using something like PowerPoint or Excel. So that's beyond the scope, but that, that would be a, one of my modules in my planner course is the idea of how to create strategies. And a lot of times companies don't have good strategies. They, they, um, like a monthly strategy, you should have like a, where you can actually have a factory calendar signed. You can have it like one month, three months, six months and have hierarchy. So they could exclude the, the previous if you want to or not want to. But then you, then you can also set a key date so that a true monthly can happen. We can have something on the true first of every month rather than SAP's assumption of 28 days. So that question is a, a good question, but beyond, I think, have I answered it? What, Jessica, um, package and package sequence, how did hierarchical columns? Uh, yeah, so what I recommend to understand it is you build one with hierarchy and build another without. And then when you go to create the plan, and, and set the, uh, the operations to the different cycles, see what your options are. You'll see whether you can, can select hierarchical or not. And when you run the plan, does it kick out both the uh, 500 and the 1000 operation on that work order, or did it properly exclude it? Now, if you're doing that exclusion, then on the 1000, if you're gonna do the 500, then you need to have your job procedure have both of those within it. Or both, what I'd say is have both documents. So you only have one document to maintain. Any other uh, questions? All right, I do have another one coming in, Greg, asking to talk about the cost center fiscal year. Okay, so this is a this is a problem a lot of companies have where they the accountant the accounting department is supposed to maintain the cost center act, uh, to the activity types within the, that are within the PM module, that the activity type on the operation within the work order, right? Say so what kind of activity it is. Well, depending on the activity for that, uh, the cost center, it would, the, uh, the, the rate, the charge out rate, the cost of the work order would be different. So if it's your, say you're, you wanna have a, a work center that is sent, set to zero for, for planning and scheduling operations work, because there's zero costs, they're, they're, uh, you don't want to capture the cost there, then, then that needs to be set up. And they, uh, uh, every fiscal year, they have to set that up. And luckily in S4HANA, there's, uh, the functionality is going to be a lot easier. So currently you have to go into a transaction and then you have to set up in the grid and that's on the, the AR the account side. So I, um, I have a job procedure I, I posted on, on, um, on LinkedIn recently about that. So uh, I don't know if I have it uh, available here, but um, anyway, that, that's something that can, should be maintained by AR. And the T code, I think it's MP26, I don't recall. One of, one of the tricks I use when I can't recall a T code is I type in MP00 in the T code box. I call it the 00, zero trick, and then it will list all the T codes that are, are related to that transaction. So I'll just give you a quick yeah, demo, demo of that. Go MP00 and see if, uh, oh, that one doesn't, doesn't work. So if I go IP00, you see it lists all, not the, in the SAP menu, everything to do with maintenance plans. So- That's a very handy trick. Yeah. So that question, I'll get back to you on that uh, with the post. Well, maybe I'll post that on uh, on uh, Michael Management and uh, as a blog. What changes? <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great blog. What changes were there in SAP PM with S four? What changes were 
Okay, so there, there is a course you can take. I'm giving you at the end a coupon you can take the course for, I think it's 10 or 20% off. I forget what I put, but um, I think it was on the previous slide. No. Oh yeah, I did see your, your code on the previous slide. Maybe mm -hmm. one or two back it had your. So that the, um, some of the changes, like I mentioned that the execute button's gone, the, um, it's available now, but it's um, the idea you can count that it gives you a count of how many rows you have in every every uh, uh, ALV layout. When you do a, every search, you get a list of things. It'll show you the count of how many rows you have found. So that's that's great. There's a um, quite a few other little things, but a lot hasn't changed with what the user sees. Of course, the big changes are underneath the hood, like the database is completely different. So it's supposed to be way, way faster, way more enhanced. So the, the technical changes are drastic, are, are uh, huge improvements. But um, from the perspective of PM as a user, it, there's not going to be a huge change if you're using a standard blog and GUI. What kind of companies use the PM module? I think we answered that one. Um, So any other questions? And we'll give people just maybe a, another minute or so. If you have any looming questions for Greg, please type them in. And in that time, Greg, if you want to tell us about any courses you might have coming up, not to put you on the spot. I know it's there's been a lot going on in the world, mm -hmm. but we love your courses. They're great. So well, we always welcome to Greg courses. Well, the main one I, I'm working on is uh, I have an outline uh, done for is a, a planner course to publish on MCC. And um, the uh, planner course, I'm going to build it with as uh, separate courses that the person can take the courses individually or take them as a package if they're really like a new planner. But if you're a planner and been using SAP for like five years and you just want to understand strategies, then it'll be a module just about strategies. Another module just on task lists for corrective and for preventative, but everything about task lists, basically making a work order template. Now, I have a list I'm working on with all the courses that I, I, I feel I need to do, and, and that I could post that as a blog to get feedback. Uh, I have a, a, a form on Google when I, I ask companies, well, what courses do you want? What courses do you need? Maybe that's something also I could talk to uh, to somebody at MCC and say, well, what they recommend I, I build next. Are yeah, that sounds wonderful. That... And this, this inspired some new questions. Do you see those ones popping up, Greg? Yeah, there's courses that get certified in PM. So a lot of the courses in MCC they take will help you pass the tests in, in certification for PM. So they're, uh, if you, the more you search online for certification guidance, you'll find a lot of information on so I'll just use Google to find out, like, uh, you might even be able to find some example questions to get certified in PM. Don't you think that Learn SAP Activate could help, even if they will be SAP key users or SAP consultant? Do you think that Learn SAP Activate could help. What, what, I'm not sure what you mean by learn SAP activate. So I'll write that down. I'll have to uh, Google what you mean by SAP activate. One, one of the things that uh, that SAP has to offer is it used to be called you perform, where so you basically a, a, you can record a transaction and then it makes a video to help teach people. It makes an interactive video to test people and it makes all the training materials. And they, they have a new name for it now. And I think their, their agreement with that company is fading. So SAP has their own solution. And I've been investigating other companies with so their solution for making a training support within the help system of SAP. Like there's a what fix and on screen and so on. So I'll have to research that SAP activate. Are you going to create, do you, uh, scrolls automatically, I have to uh, fast to read it. Are you going to create, do you have a course on PM config? Yes, I have a course on PM config and 
that one is a fairly long course and there's a lot to it. And it uh, there is some integration points between PM and, and uh, of course, MM and FICO. So learning those configurations as well would be useful. And tools. Methodology and best SAP HANA including is a new SAP framework for SAP HANA including methodology and best practices. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, there's, um, if you go on uh, SAP's site, you can actually get a lot of the technical documents on best practices with HANA, implementing HANA. That's beyond the scope of what I do. I'm not an implementer. Usually I come in after I, uh, like, as they as they actually have implemented converted, I help out with data cleansing and I help out with the training part of it. And I'm not an implementer. What eligibility criteria for SAP PM? Yeah, the the SAP. What is your eligibility criteria? I think it just if you pay them the money, you, you can take the test to get certified. So I personally think it's a bit of a cash grab. Like I know people who've who've taken it, and it's it's not just requiring you to know SAP PM or like say PM certification to not just to know as a user, but you have to also know the detail configuration and also the configuration points between PM and FICO and MM and so on. So uh, it, it's basically to get certified is to become if you're interested in being a PM consultant. And I've been I've been working with P, uh, SAP for like I said, over 15 years. So uh, that is sometimes experience and knowledge is more valuable in a lot of ways than certification. Especially now I've been seeing a lot of people flooding the internet with the, uh, uh, you know, all the cheats for uh, certification and all that. So that basically without any knowledge, you can just study and pass an exam for get certification. So, so the, some people are worried that the, the value of SAP PM certification is going to start declining. So if you are hiring someone and, and they are PM certified, make sure you really uh, know their skill set. Like one interview question I had once was something silly, like they always do. They want to see how well you memorize T-code. So they asked, what is the T-code to, to uh, schedule a maintenance plan? And I said, well, that's against my philosophy to memorize everything. So I said, well, I teach IP00. So the user doesn't need to memorize and know it's IP10 to schedule a plan. They just go IP00 and it lists all the T codes that are related to, to planning and scheduling. So I, they, the, guy, the guy who was interviewing me didn't even know that trick, the 00 trick. So, so I got the contract. But they should not just ask those kind of questions. Uh, yeah, knowledge is better, way better, way more important than certification. Yeah. yeah, both. And it should be, I think yeah. it's important for us to say as well that MMC courses are not uh, intended for you to pass SAP certification. We have a separate certification program, two completely separate different okay. programs. Um, so just, I know sometimes that word gets thrown around. So just mm -hmm. as a, a sidebar. Um, yes, knowledge is better. Someone agreed, Mar Maria. Knowledge is better than certifications, right? And and um, a lot of times what I do as a consultant is data cleansing. And data cleansing, it's like you don't learn that in the, with SAP, right? You learn that by knowing data, like knowing knowing how to write code and write macros and VBA and how to use different tools to do data cleansing. Like uh, NRX is a tool that I I, I was uh, I was educated by their lead programmer about how to use NRX Asset Hub. Basically, it's a, it's a companies like Shell Canada, Shell Global, they bought that tool to cleanse their data. But the tool is very difficult to learn unless you have a background in, in programming database. It's like SQL kind of coding, like ABAPers would just eat it up. But um, they, so when, when I was teaching, we're, we're cleansing data in Canada. I said, well, you guys have this NRX tool. Why isn't anybody using it? Because no one knew how to use it. So that's what motivated me to learn how to use it. And there's other tools as well. Utopia has tools, all sorts of tools for data cleansing. 
Yeah, uh, zero, zero trick will work with most transactions. Like uh, I'll just give you an idea. Someone asked about, will it work with MM? Yeah, MM works. So it, you know, what, if you're gonna use it, what I'd recommend is go to extra settings and make your favorites on the bottom, right? So you make your favorites on the bottom. So when you use this trick, you don't have to hide your favorites. So that's MM00 would bring up everything to deal with materials. MB00 is material transactions. So I, I like this skill because sometimes I'm helping a user who doesn't have any their very good favorites. So uh, if I don't memorize all the T codes, I can help them and then they can navigate the menus better. So if you find it doesn't work with one, like IE00, it, um, that's everything about equipment. But if, if it doesn't work, it'll just tell you and it won't load anything. If you ever do this to a user to help yourself help them, make sure you put it back to their SAP menu after with a little blue button. So not just show them how to use something, but show them how to get back to where they were. So when you leave, they're not mad at you. Yes, uh, someone asked if you open with zero zero, does it open all the associated transactions? And yes, it does. So when I do IP00, you see it's, it's um, or work, you know, work, right? Work is IW. So IW00, that's notifications, work orders. So it's everything about work management, workflow. So notifications, work orders, time confirmations. So it's a very, very useful skill. So if that's one takeaway you got for today, Great, share it. It's called the zero zero trick. That's what I call it. Anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> oh, a very another, cool trick. Another skill that a lot of people don't know is so basic. is control Z or control Z if you're in the USA. You know when you're when you mess up something like on a work order, a common problem people mess up a uh, description. You know that if you accidentally type on top of the description, oh darn, control Z, right? You can go back through time. They don't have an undo button, but it, it, Control Z works in text situations within SAP. So just a, another key, keyboard shortcut trick. Any other questions? Maybe I can just go, take a quick peek at IP11. And see, if, yeah, I'll, I'll go down a rat's hole for that with that one probably. <laughs> <laughs> But IP, I IP love it, that was the question of IP11 was uh, about cre creating, managing strategies, yeah. this whole thing. It's so nice to have you working in the system and showing everyone. And I'll, I will note everyone that after we get done today, this is actually being live streamed on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. so you can go back, rewatch, if you want to see any of Greg's handy dandy tricks that he's been pulling out of his SAP hat. So someone asked about uh, what is the future of training in SAP? Like the, um, mm -hmm. when, when I'm training SAP, it's, it's slides. People like slides sometimes, sometimes they don't. Uh, when I train in SAP, I usually train in the client so that they're seeing, and I, I, if I'm gonna click on something, I will hover. I won't go past this until all the students have seen, okay, that's where we're going, going extra settings. And I say, okay, everyone with me? Okay, great, let's go to extra settings. And so you need to explain why you're going there to make changes, but also wait for the students to stay with you if you're doing a live session. And the, one of the things that I built recently is an interactive video where the student can decide what they want to learn. So it starts off with just mm -hmm. a standard SAP screen like you see here. And every, all the, I, I make everything in red little boxes of what you can click on. So what you click on, it'll take you into a video talking about that concept. Like say, what, what's this button? Oh, wow. So you click on the button and it takes you into talking about, well, uh, there's the menu and there's options and just avoid hard copy. I, I mean, avoid, uh, what is it? Quick cut and paste. Hard copy is great for okay. doing a screen dump. Quick cut and paste, I teach them. Avoid that, because if you activate that feature, it's so annoying, it's trips up so many users. So if, I, if anybody goes in to try to select text anywhere, uh, they, they think that their SAP is broken. And it's a common problem in the help desk. You know what they do? They reinstall SAP. And the user loses all their history. They lose all their favorites. So if you 
have the feature activated, watch when I try to highlight text, it seems like I can't select text anymore. That's the symptom of this problem, right? So that's what causes it. Now, what has it done when I highlight? It's actually done a control C automatically. I can just go control V. So it's called quick wow. copy. It's, a, it's an, a feature. I don't know who invented it way back, but it's been a burden for us. I've always asked SAP to get rid of it or turn it off or give us the ability of getting it off the menu because it, it messes up a lot of users. So now I can select normally. Huh. Yay. Now, of course, you can hold your wow. mouse down and you can select. I, I know one planner who loves it. Like, I always warn people against it, but he said, I really like it now because he just holds it. When he wants to delete something, he holds his mouse and then hits delete. So, yeah, you can still highlight to delete. Hmm. But he says it takes away his need to go control C. Well, whatever. Uh, he likes it. Yeah. That's great. But I, I often teach to avoid it. And if you do activate it, make sure you t turn it off after. So there's a bunch of things like that. Yeah, in, uh... that's great. Any other questions? There's Ma Maria wrote, that's great, which I agree with. I think you've given yeah. us a plethora of wonderful tricks today. So remember, don't just and teach what to do, what not to do also. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that in the <laughs> beginning too, you said you taught the horror stories because it sticks with yeah. people. Well, I have, I have a, a document. It's listing all the horror stories as short paragraphs. And there's about about four pages long. You know what one person did recently? They were buying uh, roller bearings for a conveyor and they held down the zero key and they didn't realize it. So they hit save. They, instead of ordering 10 roller bearing assemblies for the, the rolls for a conveyor, they ordered 10,000 of, and, and the manager approved it, didn't realize, and, and went all the way up to the CEO. And, and they ended up having, uh, a couple of weeks later, all these semis coming in with roller bearings. They, they spent a multi, like, I think it was about one or $2 million worth of stuff. So uh, be careful. <laughs> that was a, a domino effect of bad practices, right? They weren't, weren't uh, having good cost control on approvals. Yeah. You're getting a, a lot of love in the question panel. People saying stories are great. It's great learning from you. Mm -hmm. Wanting to know more tricks in our last few minutes, but we do, we should wrap oh. up so we can let you get on, on with your day. But it looks like okay. Anita has oh. one last question. Oh, I love that question. It's like, uh, is there a way to a tie a measurement point to an order? So a measurement points are attached to assets, to equipment or function locations. And anything subordinate can actually inherit the readings from that measurement point. So like your odometer on a truck, all the things subordinate can inherit, like the engine, the tires, and so on. So basically, the work order could be automated that it gets created after so many run hours. So like the, uh, the life cycle of, say, certain thing you need to change out after, say, 5,000 run hours, then, then th that thing would inherit from the odometer readings. And when it hits that, your PM is what connects it all. Your, so does that answer your question, can you? It's uh, automate uh, preventative maintenance. And she said, yes, thank you. Okay, so now it's not just for run hours, of course, it's also for, can be for condition-based maintenance, where you can have a measurement point take readings like the, say you're putting in oil samples, right? And you automate your oil sample data to go into your SAP. And when oil sample gets to a certain bad, like uh, fails quality, then automatically SAP will create a notification to let you know that there's something wrong with that that uh, motor. So it's, uh, automating that kind of stuff is wonderful. I mean, it takes away a lot of the manual effort. Okay, so I guess we're wrapped mm -hmm. up. I could go on all day, is it? But <laughs> <laughs> you've been wonderful, Greg. We're so lucky to have you as an instructor and teacher. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Keep in touch. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. We appreciate okay. it. Okay, bye. Bye.